Julian Barre syndrome, commonly known as GBS, was discovered in the early 1900s by French physicians Jean Alexander Barre and Georges Julien following tests on soldiers returning from World War I. Over the preceding 80 years, cases of identical conditions had been described, but these neurologists were the first to identify the characterizing features of the disease. An increased concentration of protein in the spinal fluid without evidence of inflammation. GBS is a polyneuritis, an inflammation of many nerves, which affects the peripheral nervous systems that connect the skin and muscles to the central nervous system and leads to progressive weakness in the arms and legs. From what scientists know, Julian Barre syndrome is an autoimmune disease the body's immune system begins to trigger demyelination of the peripheral nerves, which impedes them from transmitting signals to and from the brain. That is why the muscles begin to lose their ability to respond to the brain's command. Progression of Julian Barre syndrome can come on quickly. Within a couple of weeks, a patient can go from simply feeling tingling sensations to almost complete paralysis and needing to be provided oxygen. This is a quick clip to show you how and what Julian Barre syndrome actually is. Symptoms came on fast. Within weeks, the woman you're about to meet went from being completely healthy to lying in the intensive care unit, unable to move, struggling to breathe. A victim of Guillaume Barre syndrome. Listen to her story of sickness and triumph. Cooking breakfast is a simple task, but to Beth DeVries, it's much more. I couldn't even hold the egg, let alone crack it. You see, Beth survived two episodes of recurrent Guillain-Barre syndrome. Symptoms started in her feet. It's like I couldn't feel the floor. Numbness and weakness progressed quickly throughout her body. But I walked into the kitchen and I fell on the floor, flat on my face, and I couldn't get up. I couldn't move. Beth ended up in the intensive care unit. I said goodbye to my parents three times because I didn't think I was going to make it through the night. Father and son team doctors Peter and James Dick study Guillain-Barre syndrome and related illnesses. They say the disease usually happens after a viral infection. The swine flu outbreak of 1976, also known as the swine flu fiasco, was a strain of the H1N1 influenza virus. Infections were only detected from January 19th through February 9th and were not found outside of the Fort Dix area in New Jersey. The outbreak itself was not particularly memorable, killing only one person and hospitalizing 13. However, the mass immunization that was prompted in the United States caused 500 cases of Julian Barre syndrome and 25 deaths. The number is outstanding compared with the current statistic that only 1 in 100,000 people contract GBS a year. A similar statistic is that Julian Barre syndrome is as equally likely to be contracted by anyone, men and women, children to elderly. We all have the same chances. Okay, so you're wondering, why isn't this a full-blown disease? I mean, people can be paralyzed for life with this. Well. Julian Barre syndrome is called a syndrome instead of a disease because it's still unsure whether a specific disease-causing agent is present. Usually GBS occurs a few days or weeks after the patient has had symptoms of a respiratory or gastrointestinal viral infection. Occasionally surgery can trigger it and in rare instances vaccinations may increase the risk of Julian Barre syndrome. It's still a mystery. Just in case you're wondering if you or someone you know might have GBS, or if you just want to stow this information away for later, it would be good to know that because the syndrome affects the autonomic nervous system, the area which primarily controls visceral functions such as heart rate, digestion, respiration rate, also sometimes working in tandem with the conscious mind to control breathing, the first symptoms of this disorder include varying degrees of weakness or tingling sensations in the legs. This disease is bilateral, which means it affects both sides of the body at the same time. In many cases, the symmetrical weakness and weird sensations will spread into the upper body 
and in severe cases, they will cause paralysis and even death. If someone is suspected of having GBS, a doctor will go through a simple checklist at first. He'll check whether the condition is bilateral and whether or not the patient can perform basic motor functions, such as knee jerks. Because the signals traveling along the affected nerves are slower, a nerve conduction velocity test can give a doctor clues to aid in diagnosis. In Julian Barre syndrome, the cerebral spinal fluid that bathes the spinal cord and brain contains more protein than usual. Therefore, physicians may decide to perform a spinal tap, a procedure in which a needle is inserted into the patient's lower back and a small amount of cerebral spinal fluid from the spinal column is withdrawn for testing. There are many treatments for GBS, so sit tight with me as we listen to a few together. Most patients like Beth do recover. Treatment involves what's called plasmapheresis, during which blood is washed and returned to the body. Patients may also have infusions of immunoglobulin. Both prevent the immune system from attacking nerves. After more than a year in the hospital and many months of recovery, Beth is almost back to normal, able to live the life that was briefly taken away from I hope you had fun learning about Julian Barre syndrome with me. The fact that it was discovered more than 100 years ago, the fact that it's onset extremely fast, and the fact that it affects one of the most important systems of our body, the nervous system.